How does an offensive coordinator decide the first 15 play script? Do you know what that is? Have you heard about it before? I'm going to tell you about it coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at Elite Athletes TV. Many of you know that I am also a college football analyst and I cover Pac-12 games. Today, we got a great question from one of our viewers asking about how coaches develop that first 15-play script. Some coaches will script 10, some coaches will script 20, but most coaches that I know of offensive coordinators go into a game with a first X number of plays scripted. I'm going to talk about how they do it, why they do it. I'm going to show you one from my NFL days that Sam Weiss did going into a game, and we're going to talk about overall concepts. But first, if you are new to the channel, if you love football content, if you love talking about college football, quarterback play, defense, you make sure that you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you get notified every time we have new content coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to learn about how offensive coordinators design their first 15 script and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on the game, college football, anything quarterbacking. Have a discussion just like we do with one of our viewer questions here today. Last thing, please share this video out. At EliteAthletesTV.com, we're trying to help as many young athletes as we can to improve with their sport. You sharing these videos out to help more young athletes help us affect more lives in a positive way, which is what we're here for as athletes. Now, let's get into the question. Zunella writes, Thanks, Mike. You're an excellent teacher. Thanks, Zoo. Appreciate that. Musgrave said he scripts the first 15, forget the exact number, plays like Walsh did. I know it's done so O, meaning the offense, can perfect the 15 plays during the practice week. Can you give any insight into how a West Coast offensive coordinator chooses the 15 plays relative to your presentation? When Zoo's talk about my presentation, I just put out a preview of what Bill Musgrave's offense might look like in that West Coast system, and so I will put a card right up here, and you can check that out for yourself. But I can tell you how offensive coordinators, coaches, script the first 15 plays and why they're doing it. There's several reasons. First is, it's the opening drive of the game. You want to be efficient. You want to set the right tone. You want to get out on the right foot. You want to score points, right? Build momentum for your team. And so you want to design plays, as you pointed out, Zoo, that you are confident in, that you can run to perfection, things that you have done very well during the week in practice. So that's number one. You always want to get off to a good start. Having that play script in place with plays that you're very good at allows you an opportunity to do that. Now, again, remember, we're going to look at one from my Tampa Bay Buccaneers days uh, that Sam Weish actually put together coming up here shortly. But let's talk about a couple more things. This year in the Pac-12 especially, it is really key to have a script because with COVID, the teams have been within, not necessarily bubbles, but they've been sheltered in. Media has not been allowed to go to games. There's no preseason games, so you don't have film. And so you're going right into Pac-12 competition, and there's four new offensive coordinators in the Pac-12 North alone. There's a couple new defensive coordinators in the conference as well. And so you don't really have an idea outside of looking at past game film from where they've coached before what these teams are going to do. And so offensively or defensively, you don't know if you're a new offense coordinator, you don't know how defenses are going to try to defend you. You have an idea of what happened in the past. They're looking at your old game film, but you don't know exactly how they're going to try to defend you. And so what you need to do early in the game is get a bead on what the defense is trying to do to you. How do you do that? Well, you design a first 15 play script that gives you different formations, different sets, different motions, so that you can see exactly what teams are going to try to do to you. You're also going to introduce your personnel groups. So if you're a standard 21 personnel team, two backs, one tight end, then you're going to give that look. You're going to give the pro look, the eye look, maybe the offset. You're going to run it from a wing formation. You're going to give different looks from that so that you understand how defenses will adjust to you. Because depending on how defenses adjust to you, that's, you're going to use that information. You're going to you know, hold on to that data and then use that information to decide on future play calls in those formations and sets. You're going to find what works from you 
in those sets, where the weaknesses are in defenses by the way they align to you on those. So you're going to run through a number of formations and sets so you see what the defense does. You're going to get different personnel groups in the game because you're going to want to see how defenses match up against your personnel groups. What if we go 21? What if we go 22 personnel, two backs, two tight ends? What if we go 10 personnel, one back, no tight ends, all wideouts? What if we go empty set out of 10 personnel? So there's all kinds of different looks that you want to see how defenses are going to line up and how they're going to approach you. In the same time, defenses aren't going to want to stay locked into anything, so they're going to be playing their game on their side too. But the initial adjustment to what you're doing as defenses see your offense for the first time is going to give you a sense of how they want to play you. You also want to have a first 15 script that you can share with your team if you can the day before the game so that they can get confident, so they can go through mental reps, so they can get that the familiarity with your thinking going into the game and have a real focus on what it is you're about to do. And finally, you want to have those plays in place in that first 15 that set up future plays. Maybe you're, you want to run a toss pass in this game. So in that first 15, you might want to run the toss both left and right, a couple different directions out of a certain formation to set up the thinking in that defense's mind that you're going to be running toss. Or you may have a down the line screen or a screen with a wheel out of the backfield, fake screen wheel. You, you're going to want to set that up in your first 15 to get that thinking in the defense's head. So you use that first 15, A, figure out what the defense is going to do. B, give your team solid reps, both physical and mental, so that they're great at it when the first series comes along. And C, set up what you're going to do with later plays and later calls on offense. So I have one from my Tampa Bay Buccaneers days. I'm going to show that to you right now. Let's take a look and see what are, this is an NFL first 15 play script. It's second generation Bill Walsh because obviously Bill Walsh came up with the West Coast. Sam Weish was Bill's assistant with the Niners and then was our head coach with Tampa Bay. He coordinated the offense. This is his first 15 play script. So kind of cool to see. Let's take a look. So I thought I'd start here with the Bucks playlist going into the last game of the season versus Phoenix. And so as you can see here, playing the Cardinals, and it is a solid playlist. Not it's, There's not a huge amount of plays compared to some offenses going in, but you have a lot of thoughts on here, a lot of different plays. You can see you're coming in with short passes, 76s, so that's a type of protection. It can be seven-step, it can be five-step, depending on the depth. Um, your 84s, your short 84s. All of your screens coming in, your spread stuff when you get in a nickel. And so you have all of these concepts for passing going into the game that you could potentially run. Now, here is the first 15, or in this case, the first 14. Coming into the game, you have an idea about what you're going to get. This is the second time that we had played Phoenix in this year. And so coming into the game... Sam wanted to start off in spread formation to see what he was going to get out of that Phoenix defense. So he starts off, your first two sets are spread, and on the second one, he's giving you a short motion. So if I remember correctly, we were doing spread formation out of our regular personnel sets. So we're trying to give them a different look and spread it out. It's going back 28 years now, so kind of hard to remember. But you can see the Y short tells me that this is base personnel running spread formation. So he wanted to get that look, see what he was going to get based on that look, that personnel group. Then he's going to come back with the big sets. So Panther, which was a two tight end look with that tight end, the H, from what I recall. Um, and then you're going to go with Z left. So again, different formations, different personnel groups, different motions to get a look from the defense. What you'll also notice is that you're getting, on the initial play, he's got 16 or 17, but then he's expecting hashes, 17 match. He's running this one back to the left side. 37 counter, he's expecting to run this back to the left side. So in his thinking, as he was designing this call sheet, he was thinking, a, what play am I going to run? How much am I going to get out of it? What do I expect? And then what am I going to come back with? 
And so he has a screen in here with nickel 92 protection. Roy, Roy was a screen to the right. He has a wham block in here, which I believe was outlawed. You would bring a tight end from the outside and knock the hell out of the nose guard as he tried to engage with the center. And so I'm pretty sure they, t I know they took it out in college. I'm pretty sure they also took that block out in the NFL because it was a way that dudes were getting hurt. They would get, I remember them coaching it, literally put your shoulder pad right in his hip. And if you're not seeing that coming, that's a good way to get hurt. So then you have plays like stroke and 76 yank it. So now you're starting to get more vertical in the pass game. 29 crack. So you've got a toss to the outside and you're cracking back in with a receiver. Halfback 28 grace, right? So now some specialty plays off the crack coming back to the grace. Lag pass right, right? More specialty plays coming in. And then Sooner Boss, 37 buckskin. So now that we've run the counter right up here, we're going to run the buckskin Pam. So we have specialty plays that we've set up with earlier plays in the system. You also get your, your goal line plays. First goal line, banana right. First nickel short, nickel 92, halfback at get open. So you're going to look for the solo one-on-one -on -one with the back. First nickel long, nickel 92, number four Dover, which would be a deep over with a clear out. So you have all this stuff in here that you've set up going into the game. You don't have to overthink it. You have this on your play call sheet. And then all of your alerts. What am I thinking about in terms of alerts down on the goal line? Your audibles and spread, your bear checks. Uh, the clutch goal line call, right? You need the, you need the two-point play to win the game. Here's your clutch goal line call. So rugby crack, goal line rugby crack. There it is. Um, all of these things are set in your first 15 so that you have that thinking and it doesn't have to happen. You don't have to guess or get emotional in the moment. So as you can see, there's a lot of thought that goes into that first 15. Just like any script, there's some ad-libbing that happens with most coaches. I don't know of many coaches that run it play-by-play play through the first 15. Some guys do. They stick to it. They decide that's what they're going to take a look at. Some coaches veer off of it right away. What if you score on play three? What if you get a look on play six? You need to know how you're going to get back to that and figure out what the defense is trying to do to you. That's what scripts are all about. If you like what I did here, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. All the football content that you want, we're going to have a ton of college football stuff coming out now that Pac-12 is opening up. I want to help you understand the game better. So we'll be doing it through college football reviews. We're looking at teams. We'll be talking about games, where the mistakes happen, where the big plays happen, why they happen, so that you can understand concepts. So make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. Give me a thumbs up if you understand a little more about that first 15 play script now. And leave me a comment down below. I'd love to answer your questions, as you see we're doing here with viewers on the site. Lastly, please share this video out. Family, friends, teammates, fans, anybody who you know, who loves football content, share this out with them. And we're trying to help people understand the game better, especially young players trying to improve their lives by helping them improve at the sport. I appreciate you watching, trying to improve your football IQ, pick up your game knowledge, pass on a little bit of what I learned over the years, which is really important, and help you improve your football skills. I look forward to talking to you again soon.